Haleluja. Amen, amen, amen. I want to move forward into the word, but I don't feel led there yet. And I have to be sensitive and obedient to the Lord. But there are a lot of things that's happening in the world, and a lot of things that's jumping and attaching itself to people, even Christians. Amen. And I feel that in the house today. I feel a weight in the house today. I feel a heaviness in the house. And as much as I want to go to the word of God today, I'm not led to go there yet. But we have to shake it off. Because if you do not shake it off, the enemy is going to use that. It's going to continue to grow and grow and grow and manifest. And by the time the Lord will speak, you will not be receptive to what he is speaking. And I feel that today. I want you to go to one. I want you to go to one. I don't care if it's 30 minutes long. Because we have to clean ourselves up. We can partake of communion all day. But this is a mindset and a heart change. And a lot of stuff is happening in the world today, and I see it, I hear it. It happens in my life, but I have to shake it off. I have to shake it off. I mean, we got things happening in your life, you got stuff happening, you got issues, you got challenges, you got spirits that are attacking, you got all kind of money problems, marital problems, children's problems, just job-related things, just inner things and it's attaching itself and it begins to grow and fester and then we come into the house and think that we're going to receive the word and apply it it doesn't work that way bring it down just a little bit it doesn't work that way he can pour and pour and pour and pour out his spirit but there's a block there there's only so much that word can do he said, I'm not going to pour new wine into old wineskins. Meaning, I'm not going to pour my fresh word, my word, my revelatory word. I'm not going to do that with someone who refuses to grow. Who refuses to change. Who insists on holding on to a spirit that attacks. And we know the enemy, he will launch that spirit. Why? Because he has three jobs. That is to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his only job. And he does not care because we're in the house. He does not care because we just took uh, communion. He does not care because you're sitting in the house lifting up hands. He doesn't care about that. You are the prime candidate. Bring it down a little bit more. Because I want to feel a release with this word and I don't feel that yet so I'm asking everyone to lift your hands right where you are and whatever whatever you know what it is you don't need some prophet to come and tell you what you're holding on to you don't need somebody to come lay hands on you lay hands on your own head the power can work through you Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Strip us. Prepare the atmosphere. And make this atmosphere conducive for your word to go forth. Holy Spirit, take control. Take control of the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Rule and reign in this place. This is just not a place where we gather. This is a place where the Holy Spirit dwells. If 
Father, remove every stumbling block. Break up every stony heart. Mm. Every ground that's not prepared for this word, Lord God, prepare that ground. Till it. Break it up. Lord God, convict in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Convict. Glory, 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 Lord. We know you can do it. You have all power. All authority. And Father, we submit to your leadership and your lordship. Hmm. There needs to be a shift in the atmosphere. And only you can do it, Lord. And not only are we inviting you, we are asking you to do it in the name of Jesus. So that your word will go forth and not only be heard, but will be applied, will be received in the mighty precious name of Jesus. We lift our hands in total surrender. We surrender. Come on, I need you to open your mouths because you know there's power in your mouth. Mm, don't sit there and listen. I need you to open your mouth. I need you to open up your mouth. I need you to speak a thing. Come on. I need you to speak, Lord God, you're worthy. Come on, open your mouth and speak well of him. Speak well of him. Come on, open your mouth. Prepare the atmosphere. I can speak it, but you need to speak it. Speak over your role. Hallelujah. Plead the blood of Jesus over your role. Come on, declare a decree. There's anybody on your role that is not in position to receive the word. Come on, I need you to speak over. Declare the word of God over your role. Declare peace over your role. Declare breakthrough over your role. Come on, you're on that role. You're on that role. Take authority over it. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth. Speak a word, speak a word, speak a word. Come on, elevate, elevate, elevate. Lift your voices. Lift your voices, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, speak over you, speak over your role. Come on, plead the blood. Come on, declare a decree. Power, authority, peace, love, healing, deliverance, breakthrough. We bind everything that's not of you. Heavenly Father, anything that's not of you, we destroy it. Hallelujah. Come on, I need you to walk around. 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 Come on, I need you to clap your hands. I need you to open your mouth. I need you to put a praise on it. I need you to do what needs to be done to break up every stony heart. There will be peace in the house. There will be joy in the house. There will be a breakthrough in the house. There will be love in the house in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, Zion. Come on, come on, come on, Zion. Come on, you can do better than that. I didn't say pat a cake. I don't pat a cake, the Lord. Come on, open your mouth. Anybody can clap your hands, but open your mouth. Leave it at the altar, whatever you, whatever spirit, leave it at this altar, leave it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. Shake it off. Come on, shake it off. Mm. Mm. Come on, 
Glory to the Lamb. 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 Hallelujah. Ay, 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 It's getting there, but it's still something. We're not there. We're not there. We're not there. We're not there. You still have it. You're still holding on to it. Lay it at the altar. Give it to God. Come and tap the altar, whatever you got to do. Lay it down. Mm. Pride comes before a fall. Pride, the Bible says, come before a fall. Glory to the Lamb. 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 Hallelujah. She's not the, this is not the only individual who needs to be at the altar. I know it's not. There's not a freedom. There is not a freedom. There is not a breakthrough. Lay it here. Lay it here. Bring it down to the altar. Tell the Lord he can have it. Take control of it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Declare a breakthrough in the house. Declare freedom in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Come on, cast that spirit off. Cast it down. Cast it, bind it, rebuke it. Tell it to go to the pit of hell. Tell him it can't dwell within you. Cast it down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Jesus. There's a spirit going around, hallelujah, that's attacking. And it is trying to destroy. It's trying to separate. Hallelujah. Come on, I need you to lift up your voices. Hallelujah. I feel it in the atmosphere. It's trying to destroy. It's trying to take your peace. It's trying to take your mind. It's trying to take your hope. Hallelujah. Don't hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. Let it go. Don't be prideful. Let it go. Break free. Break free from it. Break free. 
I curse that spirit. I bind it to the pit of hell. It's attacking the mind. And I feel it. It's trying to attack the mind so it can attach itself to the heart. And all that God has brought you through and all that God has brought you over, the devil is trying to make it for naught. You better bind him in the name of Jesus and tell the devil he cannot have your blessing. He cannot have your breakthrough. He cannot have your promises. He cannot have your marriages. He cannot have your children. He cannot have your peace. He cannot have your mind. Come on, you better bind it. You have authority to bind and to loose. You have authority to bind. You have authority to loose. We're in a spiritual battle right now. This is warfare. We are in a war right now. Go shut a little send a little bit see ki yada la mo shit. Mmm. I can present. I curse it at the root. I curse it at the root. I curse it at the root. Go bo shut a little bit send a little bit send a yada la mo shit. What are you still trying to hold on to? What are you still trying to hold on to? What ego? What pride? What spirit is trying to take a hold of you? Mm. You better put it under your feet. Stop on the devil. And tell him he can't have your house. He cannot have your manhood. He cannot have your womanhood. He cannot have it. Spirits are lurking. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Ay, 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 ay. Hallelujah. Some of you need to speak over your own self. Speak over your own house. Speak over your mind. Lay hands on your head. Lay hands on your heart. Hallelujah. Hi, 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 hi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy is coming to steal. But the Lord did not bring you this far. For you to give over your blessing and for you to give over that which he has for you over to the devil willingly. Fight for it. Fight through it. Where are the fighters in the house? Where are those who determine? Where are those who determine? We can say it. We can say it. But you have to be determined. Jesus. Jesus. Worship him, worship him. Glory to your name, Jesus. 
Come on, worship the King of Kings. Don't spectate. Worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lords. Give him glory in the place. Give him honor. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Woo, Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, cry out to the Lord. Come on and cry out to the Lord. Come on and cry out to the Lord. He says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. There's so much that happens in families. And that it's on me so heavily that families, homes, marriages are under serious attack. And I'm not talking about just people in the world, I'm talking about church people. People who are striving every day, people who are trying and it seems like the enemy is gaining ground. The more you pray, the more you push, the more you strive, the harder the attacks. And it's beginning to weigh the people of God down. But I've been sent to tell you, fight through this. Whatever the enemy is trying to plant here so that it can eventually get to here and then it will end up coming out of here because once it comes out of here you've given life to it you've now given it a seed and then it can then grow long as it stays here whatever it can't stay long it becomes hardened but once you keep putting it out there and say it'll never change, it'll never get better, how long and all that, it, it, you're giving it life to death. You're giving life to negativity. You have to continue to speak although you don't see it. Speak what you want. And not just for a Sunday deal, that's every day. It's an everyday thing. It, we are in a spiritual war. This has nothing to do with your neighbor. This has nothing to do with your spouse. It has nothing to do with a person. It's a spirit operating. And if you don't recognize that it's a spirit, you'll fight against, you'll fight against symptoms and you will never deal with the root or the root cause. And the root cause, we know who that is. We know who it is. 
but we will keep fighting symptoms. You will never, ever, you can cut a tree, you can cut the fruit off the tree, but you never deal with the root. It will continue to grow. It will continue to manifest. So you have to say, Lord, ask yourself, Lord, what's in me that I need to get a hold of so I can destroy it by the power of the Holy Ghost? It's not your neighbor. It's not, it's a spirit operating. It's not your child. It's not your spouse. It's not your co-workers. You have to learn to look at a spirit. Command it to come down. Command it to go. You and I have been given authority. But if we don't use it, it's not God's fault. We've been given power to bind and to loose. And there are some things that's happening in our lives that we're not binding. We're letting it have its way. And the reason why we let it have its way is because you're tired physically, mentally, and emotionally. So you're just letting it like, I'm, t- I'm tired of this losing battle. I'm t- I'm, I throw my hands up. I said, no, if you're going to throw your hands up, throw your hands up to me. But you still got to fight in the Holy Ghost. You still got to push through. I mean, you got some things you got to fight through. Everybody in the building. We got some stuff. Not a thing. Some stuff that we've got to fight through. And if you are a weakling who gets tired quickly, <laughs> the enemy going to have you. Don't matter if you can pray. Don't matter if you can preach, don't matter if you can sing, don't matter if you can serve, that's irrelevant. He's coming for the ones who call on the name of Jesus, who look like you got it going on. You look like you have it together. But in here, you're dying. In here, you're struggling. In here, it's almost a dead end. And God says, Fight through this thing. Get some spiritual muscles and fight through this. And you don't have to fight hard. Just bind and loose. Open your mouth. Stop thinking and start speaking. Don't think, speak. Don't think, declare. Don't think, decree, prophesy. Put something in the atmosphere. Once you put it in the atmosphere, you've now given God something to work with. Some of us, we're holding on things. You're thinking it, but you ain't saying nothing. You're thinking. You're thinking that you're tired. You're thinking you're lonely. You're thinking it's not going to change. You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. And God says, stop thinking. And open up your mouth and speak what you want. Decree what you want. Declare what you want. The word of God is alive today more than it was years ago. We can stand on this book is real. This book is real. This was not back Abraham, Isaac. This is not just for them. About them. This is for us today. And we can live this word. And this word can manifest in our lives. He wants the best for his children. I can say it all day. I know he wants the best for me. I know there are challenges that come in my life almost daily. But I have to keep getting up and keeping my mind focused on the word of God. That's going to be things. But again, I ask where are those who are going to fight? Where are those who are going to tell the devil, you can't have me? Where are those who are going to tell the devil, you can't have my marriage? Where are those who are going to tell the devil, you can't have my family? Where are those who are going to speak life and not death? Where are those who are going to speak encouragement and not discouragement? Going to speak positively and not negatively? It's your choice. I can say it all day. But it's your choice. We walked in heavy. But how many of you feel lighter? You got to feel lighter. You walked in with a lot here. Yes, but free yourself. And God said, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. (laughs) 
God is such an on-time God. I'm going to ask that you would turn to Philippians. I won't keep you long. I don't think I won't. I don't know what the Holy Ghost is going to do, but I won't. Philippians 1. Philippians 1, 6. Philippians 1, 6 says, For I am confident in this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it and carry it on to completion until the day Jesus Christ returns. I want to read that again for somebody who may be still going through a little sum sum in your head and your mind. I was sent to tell you to have the assurance and the confidence to know this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will, tell your neighbor that's a guarantee, Come on, tell your other neighbor, that's a guarantee. That he will perfect it and carry it on to completion until the day that Jesus Christ returned. For the sake of a subject briefly, I'm going to talk to you on God is not finished with you yet. God is not finished with you yet. Before you see that, now tell your other neighbor, I think you're going to need this word today. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Tell yourself, I think I'm going to need this word today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God is not finished with you yet. Now, I want you to hear this today because God has a plan in place. Before your mama, before your daddy got together, God already had a plan in place in place for you. And he tells us today that which he has put in place in your life will come to pass. It will. Regardless of how things may look right now, he's not finished with you yet, Tanya. He's not finished with you yet, VCB. He's not finished with you, Andre. He's not finished with you, Miriam. He's not finished with you. Regardless of how things may look right now, Cornelius, he's not finished. He has a plan and he has a purpose for you. Understand that in our text, I want you to receive this good news. And the reason why this is good news is because we are given the assurance that no matter what life throws us, and no matter what it is that you may be going through or what situation that's trying to take you out, what God planned for you will manifest. And get this, what he has for you, no demon in hell can stop it. There's no power that's strong enough that can block it. Now, we can get out of the will of God, but there's no power, there's no demon that can stop what God has for you. Why? Because the Bible tells us that he who has begun a good work in you is not going to let anything happen to you until he perfects that which he's put inside of you and that he's already done in you. He tells us that. And it was obvious and evident today that a lot of us are going through a lot right now. A lot of us are dealing with a lot of issues and a lot of challenges right now. The enemy has upped the ante a little bit, and he's trying to see who he can wear down. But you have to keep pressing, and you have to keep praying, and you got to keep holding on and holding on to God's word. And it seems like every time you do that, the attack gets harder. Anybody can relate to that? The more you press, the more you read, the more you pray, the more you fast. We just came off a of fast. It seems like the, mo the, the moment you start eating, all hell broke loose. The moment you start trying to do what God told you to do, the moment you decide that you were going to try to obey and do the will of God, it seemed like the enemy just opened up the gates and just let out all the imps to attack you and your house. But God says he has put a work in you. He has put something inside of you, a gift, a promise, a calling, a purpose inside of you and he who has begun a good work in you will perfect it you ain't going nowhere i don't care how hard the enemy try understand this 
for the past several months, for the past, oh my gosh, almost a year, if not even more, I have spoken to Christians and mainly church folk, church people, people who decided to follow Jesus. They, decide, they made Jesus their choice. People who are calling on his name constantly, people who are making adjustments, people who've made some necessary changes so they can live right and do right. People who say, Lord God, I repent. Lord God, I don't want to stay the same. I want to be changed. And the moment you said that, the enemy <laughs> stepped up in the house. The enemy came to attack the mind, and now it feels like you're being beat up on all sides. It doesn't seem like it's going to get any better. And he told us now that this is the year of manifested blessings, but it seemed like we're so far from it. This is the year of manifestation of the blessings, but yet the first quarter is rocky. Understand this now. If for every woman who in here who has given birth to a child, I've alluded, this to, 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 alluded to this before, but it's a well-known fact. The moment you get close to your breakthrough is when the pain is most severe. Some of us, you, you got to believe you're almost at your birthing point. <laughs> because the pain is real. You've got to know that you must be ready to push forth something. You got to be. Because uh, uh, in, in, in the first month, second month, third month, blah, 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 little something, something, you feel the something. But then as you get closer to the ninth month, as you get closer, it doesn't matter who it is. I, my wife wants to kill me when she was getting ready to deliver. It didn't matter. She didn't like me. I was putting ice chips, wet, cold towels on the forehead, and I was doing all kinds of stuff. She was like, get away from me. It's like another person. She became another person like, get away from me. Why? Because of the pain was so intense. But on the other side of the pain was what she'd been waiting on. The manifestation of what she'd been waiting on was right there. But she first had to get through the pain that preceded the blessing. Hear this now. And the bigger the blessing, the more intense the pain. And some of us have been asking God for great things. For big blessings. That's why I know you ain't asking for nothing small. That's not how we are. We're not, we're not even formed that way. We want big blessings. God said, I'll give it to you. But along with that big blessing, it's going to be preceded. I know that's right. By something that could block it. And it's the deal. You have, the doctors kept telling her, Dr. Song, Song kept telling her, Katina, <laughs> you are going to have to push. Listen. And it seemed like the more she was like, <sighs> she said, you're going to have to push, Katina. You can't stop now. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there telling her, push. This is your pain. Listen, listen. I have my level of pain, but this is your pain. I can't push for you. Hear this. Hear it, believers. I can't push for you. I can't breathe for you. I'm sitting there. Remember what we did, Lamaze? She forgot all about what happened, Lamaze. I forgot what happened. I don't know what they said. What, you know, when the pain is real, you forget all about. What, what, what the training was. You ain't thought nothing about what they said. You just want deliverance. One hour goes by. Two hours go by. Then they want to put the little management thing. They're like, you want to go for a walk? A walk? No, I want you to help get this child out. I want you to help get this promise out. I want you to help get this miracle out. And she was like, Dr. Silas, you're going to have to walk it out. And she had to walk 
We going down. I'm holding her hands. I, I, it's a blessing. I still got these. <laughs> it's a blessing because she was squeezing. Like, and there were times when she would have to stop and say, wait, give me a minute. Why? Because the pain came. This ain't got nothing to do with the mess. I don't know why this is even here. This ain't even got to do with the, what the Lord on, on that paper. And we began to walk and walk. There were times when she had to stop and say, give me a minute. I was like, you okay? She said, mm-mm, mm-mm. And she would stop, let the pain subside. And she would take a few more steps. A few more steps now. Now, we ain't walk the building. A few more steps. And the more the pain would come, the more stops she had to make. And some of us are saying, Lord God, overwhelm me with blessings. I need you to prosper me. I want you to open up the windows of heaven and pour out such blessings upon me that I will not have room enough to receive. Bless my husband. Bless my wife. Bless my children. God, I want you to do this for me because I ain't got no problem doing that. But the steps <laughs> are going to seem like you ain't going nowhere because of the intensity of what's going to precede the blessing. And then when we got back to the room, whatever, he wanted to see if she had dilated a little more. Are you, in other words, he was asking, are you ready for what you've been waiting on? Only to go back in there and say, you ain't dilated yet. Ooh, my God. I'm like, come on, dilate. Come on. My fingers can't take it no more. Come on, what you waiting on? And more and more and more. And some of us are saying, Lord God, I think I'm ready. God said, you ain't even dilated yet. You ain't even ready. You are upset over this little bit of thing. You just one sentiment. You ain't even done nothing. This little thing ticks you off. That little thing bothers you. This knock you off your course. You ain't even dilated. How are you going to even handle when the real intense come? When this right here is trying to cause you to quit. This little pain right here was just one just a little bit. And you asked me for a 10 pound. You asked me for a 10-pounder. You said, Lord, God bless me and bless me a lot. Is it what you asked for the Lord? Now, some of y'all like right now, Lord, they could be premature if you're mine. <laughs> they could be a little three pounds. I'll take it. I'll nurse you. I'll grow it. I will keep nourishing. Uh -huh. Yeah, but understand this here now. Some of us have been praying for big blessings. And this is what God says. God said, the promise is already there. I, would, I, I think it was with Alexis. And the gates could be getting bigger and bigger. And, and the pain was intense, 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 intense. And the doctor said, listen here. It was Kendra, the one of these kids. <laughs> but here's the deal. It kept going and kept going. The intense, listen, the, the intense, the more, the, the bigger the child, the bigger the promise, the more intense. This is what the doctor said. The doctor said, listen. This baby can't come the natural way. Listen, this one that's not going to be able to come through the birth canal. We got to cut this one out. Listen. Because <laughs> some of us are being cut on. And God said, in order for me to get that, because my wife, they were like, now, in order for that to happen, we're going to have to give you some anesthesia. You can't, you can't, whatever they do, epidural. Like, what, all the mothers in the house. <laughs> all those who had some pain going on, huh? And, and, and they had to give her epidural and all that kind of stuff. And, 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 and she was sitting there. But listen, they were like, listen, because we got to bring forth the promise. But we're going to have to cut it out. Listen, we're going to have to cut it out, cut the promise out. But when we cut the promise out, listen, your healing process is going to take longer. <laughs> because now your muscles 
all this stuff. I remember that's been almost 30 years ago, but I was sitting there like I was cut on. And they said the muscles got to him. the healing. The natural way, the natural way without complaint, here it is. The natural way spiritually, meaning, Lord, do you. However you want to bring it forth, bring it forth. I ask for the miracle. I ask for the blessing. I ask for the abundance. Bring it forth. Now, I know pain is part of the process. So, but bring it forth. I'm not going to complain about it. But that's the natural way. You let the Lord have his way. The abnormal way is you fight the process. And you complain the whole time. You murmur the whole time. You start doing things, saying things, going places, whatever, just to try to have your way because you're trying to fight the process. God said, I already put it in there, and I'm going to finish my work. Now, you can have this child, this promise, this miracle, voluntarily or involuntarily, but either way, it's coming out. But if I do it because you refuse to obey, I'm going to have to cut you. I'm going to have to apply some stuff here. And some of us are fighting the process. God says, all right, have your way. But I've done a good work in you. I've already started it. And I'm going to continue to do it until the day of Jesus Christ's return. I've already put a work in you. I've already called you to be blessed. I've already called you to be victorious. I already have favor on you. You're already the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're already blessed and you're going in coming out. You're already that. But life will come at you to try to abort what I put in you. But you've got to be determined, say, Lord God, regardless of what it is, regardless of what comes for the miracle, the promise, the manifestation of it, I'm willing to do whatever I got to do because I want this promise. Some of us are going through some and it, for, for naught because you give up. And you go through pain and, and like, okay, <laughs> the longer you keep pressing, the longer you keep pressing against me, the longer it's going to take. And God said, just surrender. Say, Lord God, have thine own way. And sometimes that's tough to say when you don't know what his way is. You like have thine own way, but I don't know what your way is. But you know his way is for you to be good and his way is for something good because God can't bring forth something bad. He's not a bad guy. He can't bring something bad. So God says, whatever I do is good. So when you say, Lord, have thine own way, trust that it's something good for you. And because of that, we don't have to fight it. And some of us are fighting the process. You want to quit. You want to throw in a towel. You want to murmur. You want to complain. You want to gossip. You want to do all these things. And God said, just stop it. Stop it. Life is going to come for you. The enemy is going to be on your heels because you're close to the manifestation. It's going to be intense. It's going to be severe. That's part of it. But keep pushing. Eventually, it will come forth. You have to believe that. I know my manifestation blessing. I know it's coming. But I've got to be willing to push through. There are times and days and weeks that come, and I'm like, Lord God, I... And, and right when I get ready to say something negative, he tell me, Rick, you better not put it out there. And there are times I want to say, uh, uh, anybody ever been there before? And then God stops you. You're like, I just, because uh, the Holy Ghost stops you and say, you better not give it life. And some of us, are, all we're doing is walking around like, uh, what's wrong? Are you all right? That's all you can do because life is coming at you. Bam, bam, bam. And, and God, and this ain't got, we in here a long time today because I ain't touched these. I'm on page two. But just for somebody today, because he didn't took us all off into this. You've got to be willing to say, Lord, I want this blessing bad enough. I prayed for it long enough. I've waited for it. So I'm willing to do what I got to do. I don't care how challenging and how difficult it may become. And that's where a lot of us are right now. But you get to decide whether it's going to be 
naturally by surrendering? Or is it going to be this? And it's going to take longer to heal. <laughs> so the thing of it is, do you want the pain on the front end or the back end? Because either way, it's going to be some pain. <laughs> either way, either going to be some, front, some pain on the front end by letting it come naturally, or it's going to be some pain on the back end by taking longer to heal. Because the thing of it is, with Lady Gates, when she was, <clears throat> when, when one of these children, whichever one, they had to cut out, and then they had to do all those things, her process, she had to stay in bed longer. Listen. She'd stay in bed longer. And then she had to go through the, you know, this little season. This was back in the day. Now, Eve, you can have a, they, they send you home after two minutes. But back in the day, you'd be up in the hospital for days and days and days. I'm like, good Lord, let us go to our residence. But they want to stay there and stay there and stay there. And, and the shoe, we walk and walk and she was like, but with, with, with the one that came naturally, they kept, Katina, you ready to go home? Listen, you ready to go home? The one that came natural, listen, but the one that had to cut out, we had to stay where we didn't have to be longer. Don't miss that. We had to stay where we didn't have to be. We had to stay there longer. If we just would have just, just let it come naturally, we could have been gone. And some of us are where we are longer than we should because we had to go through the hard way. God says, I don't know why, I don't know why this is even here. I'm on page one. But he tells us we got to learn how to fight and not complain. We got to learn to speak life even when we're facing death. When it doesn't look bad. Some of us, some of us like pity parties. Some of us like we, we, we get more attention when we feel sorry for ourselves. We get more, how many know people like that? There's some people like they like they like to look bad, they like to look down. Why? Because then you can ask, are you okay? That's how they get attention. And so they keep looking sad so that you can keep giving them attention. No, you don't keep giving them attention until you snap out of it. Until you grow up. This is part of the manifestation. And, and we've been saved long enough. I've seen you up in here almost for, for two and three years. So I know you're getting some word in here to know you got to strengthen your spiritual muscles. The enemy's going to come, but God says, okay, but I have come that you have a life and life more abundantly. I, never mind why he came. You better recognize why I came. You know why he came. Good. Don't be stupid. Know why he came, but understand I too have come. That you have a life and have a life to the full. Enjoy your life. You don't have to wake up and have headaches and all that kind of stuff every day. I say enjoy your life to the full. That's what the word of God says. How many of you going to live your life to the full? You're going to enjoy your life. He said, I want you to enjoy your life to the full. Abundant life. A good life. Yes, with issues. But you can still have it. In our text, he says, I have begun a good work. I have begun a good work in you. But understand, the enemy is going to come in little by little, inch by inch, bit by bit. Little stuff going to try, try to come and pick at you to get you to lose focus. But understand, these are just light and momentary troubles. These are, these are just, just, the Bible talks about that. He said, it talks about it, that these light and momentary troubles, they're going to pass away. They're just temporary. Don't let whatever it is that you're going through cause you to become sad. Don't let whatever it is you're experiencing cause you to become discouraged. Because you to start questioning God and why you're here and why you're doing what you're doing. Don't let it happen. It's just temporary. Tell your neighbor, it's just a temporary thing. It's all part of the process. Understand that. It's a process. And we're going to talk about it in a, few, in a few minutes. It's a part of the process. It's part of what God is doing to make you. It's what he's using 
to shape you and to mold you to become who he has already ordained for you to be. Paul and Timothy were writing to the Christian's family and the believers in Philippi, and they told him, God sees all the good work that you've been doing. He sees that. He sees the progress that you've been making. He sees the attempts that you've been making to, do, to live holy. He sees you trying to do the right thing. He sees your efforts. That's what Paul and Timothy were telling them. So he told them to keep up the good work. Don't allow life to pull you away from doing what is right. Don't allow life to pull you away from trusting God. That's what he would, they were telling them. See, understand this. Uh, 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 that is good news for all of us, Dr. Joan, because when we get discouraged and don't seem like it's going to happen, God says, don't, don't look at that. Walk by faith and not by, we know the word, good Jesus. Walk by faith and not by sight. Understand, God is saying, stay close to me. I know it looks like it's not going to happen, but I will finish what I started. If I put the work in there, I will finish it. I will complete it. Understand this. Understand. Uh, 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 one of the things that uh, I like about this is that God, see, he tells us, he gives us the assurance it's going to get better. It's going to get better if you do not give in to the enemy. I remember reading about Moses, and you all know that, when Moses went up to the mountain, Mount Sinai, and stayed up there 40 days and 40 nights. But then the people began to question, and they were like, where is he? And they got tired of waiting on him. They got tired of trusting and worshiping God. So they gave up, and they stopped doing what they were doing. And they started worshiping something else because they thought that God had deserted them. Have you ever prayed to God and, and felt like God wasn't listening? And you felt like God wasn't responding? <coughs> so they stopped worshiping God. In fact, it says in Exodus 32, go there. Did I give you all that? Exodus 32, 1. It says, when the people... <coughs> when the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down for the mountain, y'all got that? There you go. When the people saw that Moses was so long coming down for the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come make us gods who would go before us and for, his, and for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt. We don't know what has happened to him. Skip down to verse 7. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down now. Go on down to Claremont. Because your people, whom you brought up out of Egypt, have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. Now, understand, an idol don't mean something that you have to make. It could be anything you put before God. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought. Now, this is stupid, but they did it anyway. Who brought you up out of Egypt? Verse 9. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, <coughs> and they are a stiff necked people. <coughs> In other words, stiff neck, you know what that means. Stiff neck means they, you forgot what the Lord has done. You're stuck in your, 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 your focus here, right? Now leave me alone so that my anger, listen, may burn against them and that I may destroy them. This, this is people of God. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses, verse 11, thank God for Moses. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should Egyptians then say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your anger, from your fierce anger, and relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land, I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Verse 14. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster that he had threatened. God is saying the work that he started in you, although he, you tick him off, he's still going to do it. He still, I thank God for his grace. That's called grace. That's called mercy. Anybody thankful for God's grace and God's mercy? He said, although sometimes you tick me off because you don't do right, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to give you another opportunity. I'm not going to wipe you out. I'm not going to destroy you. I'm going to give you another opportunity. It's been rough. It's been tough. You got a lot going on. And right now, challenges are there. It's not going the way you hoped. It's not going the way you thought that it would go. But I'm here to tell you today and all of us in the house today and those who are watching online, I don't care how hard it gets 
how hard it may seem or how difficult it may be or how challenging the situation is, God says, I'm going to finish what I started. I'm going to bring forth that which I put inside of you. I remember when David, oh, I, this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible about David. David's own family didn't think much of him. Hear this, hear this, hear this about the king. His own family did not think much of him. His own father overlooked him. His own brothers overlooked him. And as a matter of fact, you know, they sold him. They didn't like him. They counted him out. He was a misfit. He was a nobody in the eyes of man. Goliath overlooked him and tried to uh, 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 bully him. Samuel overlooked him and tried to kill him. They never saw him more than a little brother. They never saw him as being more than a sheep herder, a pretty boy, the youngest or the smallest. They never saw him being a man that was God was going to bless, and that God was going to use, and that God was going to promote. But God said, it's okay, David. Let the child, I know, can you imagine? He's like, I know it's painful. Your own family and sold you out. That's pain. Your own father overlooked you. When, 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 when Samuel came to North, they like, ain't nobody else. Can you imagine? David like, what you mean nobody else? I'm out back. And the other brother's like, oh, ain't nobody out there but this little red here. Go on out there. He out back, but I know he ain't the one. His own brother. And then he had so much favor. Listen. So much favor. It's something about the favor. I don't know about you, but I got favor on my life. And when you have the favor of God on your life, things happen to you. Things come to distract you. See, you how many of you want the favor continuously? See, 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 that right there get me. That, that get me right there. I'm going to tell you why that gets me. Because we all want the favor, but you don't want what comes with it. You, 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 you all, we, 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 want, we always want the good life. We're so selfish. We always want the good. God said, with favor, it attracts the enemy. <laughs> you ain't just going to walk through life smelling roses. You ain't just going to walk through that kind of light. No. <laughs> it gets me with believers. I ask them, do you, you want to be blessed? Oh, God already blessed me. You want the favor? I'm favored. You, I'm anointed. I'm called by God. I love it. And as soon as some attacks the house, pastor, I'm like, when you're the one I saw, what's up? What happened? Seriously. I'm like, what, what happened last week? What happened? Whew. Something popped off. And, and I, I, I don't know how much more I can take. I said, it's, it was seven days ago. It's just seven. Not seven years. Seven days. That you were just telling me that God is an on time God. You bless you, Holly Faith. Yeah, yeah, but you know, uh, Thursday? Thursday, Pastor. <sighs> the devil came for me. I was like, well, not only did he come, it looked like he won. <laughs> not only did he come for you, he won this one. Because look at your countenance. Look at what happened to what you were saying Sunday, last, just, just, just three days ago. What happened? You don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know what he came for you with, but I know what he came for me with, but I still had to decide what I was going to do. See, I think some people think that he don't come for me. He come for me almost as, as much as he come for you because he wants to see, can I now destroy what I want? What I, I want to destroy everything that God has for you. But this is the thing. I, I, God always comforts me by saying, remember David? And the ones who walked away from him and the ones who counted him out, his own flesh and blood. Listen, his own flesh and blood. But yet and still, I had a purpose for him. I had a plan for him. And I got a plan for your life. It doesn't matter who's against you. It doesn't matter who tried to put you down. It doesn't matter how high the bills are. It doesn't matter who walks out on you, who talks about you. That's irrelevant. What matters is who's for you. What matters is who said you shall be the top and not the bottom. That's what matters. Never mind all the externals. What has God spoken over you? 
And I have to continue to tell my, that's how I encourage myself. I encourage myself daily. Like, Lord, this is what you said. This is what your word promises me. And although I got this happening and that happening and this coming and that pulling, although, Lord, but I also know your word cannot lie. Your word will not lie. And I don't care if I got to get up fighting. We talked about the gazelle and the lion all the time. We talk about, the, we talk about those two animals all the time, about the lion and the gazelle. About the lion got to get up and be the fastest runner to eat. And the gazelle got to get up fast, be the fastest runner in order to live. <laughs> but they both get up running. Now, if the gazelle sat there and said, they said, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like running. All right, bam, you did. Yeah. If the lion, if the lion oh, I, 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 I don't feel like, I don't feel like I'm tired of running. I'm tired of trying to chase these gazelles down. Stay there. You'll die. Because you won't be fed. And a lot of times that's what we have. But God said, you got to get up and fight every day because the enemy is sitting right there. Bam. Every time you open your eyes, he's going to try to present something. And he's not going to present it to his own folk who don't know God. It's the ones who know God. He's after the ones who confess the Lord God Jesus as your Savior. As Lord. He's after you. Tell your neighbor, you're a prime candidate. You are a prime candidate. He comes for the ones who are trying. He comes for the ones who are reading the word. He's not, let's, uh, 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 uh. I just get anxious when it gets to this point. I have to calm myself down, like just chill. Because I get like, I get so frustrated sometimes when I'm looking at, I see it like, Pastor, and then a day goes by. And I get a text. I call, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be some good news. I'm like, oh, what's up? What's up? Because I just talked to him yesterday. So I know you're getting ready to tell me something good because I just saw you just hollering and screaming and giving God glory. So I'm ready to receive this next report. And then Monday, they get a text, Pastor, I need you to call me right back. I'm like, come on here. On my lunch break, let me call them because they're about to tell me something good. And he said, hey, Pastor, hey, what's going on? Oh, and right there, I'm like, Jesus. Why? So, so they say, oh, you don't have any idea. I'm like, well, I ain't got but a few minutes. What is it? What happened? What happened? What could jump off in your life so bad that it causes you to lose your hope in God? Or what's happening in your life that's causing you to try to lose your hope in God? What is it? What's coming for your peace? What spirit is there that's trying to snatch it? David it didn't matter. Just like Joseph. That's another one of the stories. His brothers. Whatever. His brothers, David's brothers was like, why are you even here? We didn't ask for you. He was just being obedient to the dad to go out there and take them some food. That's all he was doing. Being obedient to the father. And then he ends up in a fight. <laughs> okay? Over somebody who could snatch him up. But listen, I, this is what I love. This is what I love about God and they, how, how God operates. When David, God had already put something in David. God already knew who David was going to be. He already knows who you're going to be. Right? He knows this. David didn't have to go out there passing out business cards. He didn't have to go out there trying to sell this, trying to be the next this and next that. No. David was just obedient to tending sheep. He was just tending and doing what he was called to do. God sent somebody to find him. And sometimes we get so off track by trying to be and trying to do. And God said, if you just do what I tell you to do, I got somebody to come and anoint you. I got somebody to come and appoint you. I got the hookup for you if once you get out the way. You so busy trying to find your own hookup. You so busy trying to find your own connections. You so busy trying to get your own loan. Uh, that I'm blocking it because you didn't you think you did it. I already got a purpose for you. I'm going to send the person to you. I'm going to send you to the right person once you learn to wait on me. But as long as you try to do it, 
then you do it. I love that. David didn't even know nothing about he was going to be next king. He had no idea he was going to do any of that. He was just being obedient, tending sheep, doing, staying in his lane. Let me say that again. Staying in his lane. Now, he could have sat there and said, why am I, why am I the one out here in the heat, tending sheep? My brother's on the inside. Why am I here in the heat? Why am I the misfit? Why am I a nobody? Why God overlooked me? No, he was out there tending sheep, killing lions and bears. He was out there doing what God had called him to do. But some of us stop doing what God has called us to do and start focusing on what we're going through instead of seeing what's on the other side of what we're going through. I love the word through because it lets me know you don't have to stay there. It's not going to always be there. You're going through it. You're not in it. You're going through it. Understand this. You're not stuck in it. You're not going to always be in it. You're going to go through that. Hello. You're going to go through it. And some of us don't even want to go through it, and, 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 and we end up dying in something you didn't have to die in. Caving in, giving in, which you didn't have to give in to. And so it doesn't matter if we're sitting here listening to the word of God. It doesn't matter if you're reading the word of God. It doesn't matter if you're fasting, although that's great. That's a start. But then recognize that God has put something in you, and he's already called you to be great. He's already called you to be blessed and highly favored. And what God does, nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop David from being king. Nobody can stop Joseph from ruling. Nobody can stop them, no matter how hard they tried. Saul tried to kill him. It does, it's his own brother sold him. It doesn't matter who tries to stop you. Once God has put a work in you, he's going to finish it. You don't have to sweat the problem. You don't have to sweat the issues. You ain't got to sweat the hate. Let it go. It's going to pass. Stop staying where God has called you to go through. Walk through it. Shadrach, Meshach, and don't be in the fire, but don't come out. Burn up. You can smell like smoke, but you're not burn up. God will step in there with you, but you got to believe it. You got to stand on the promises of God, even though all hell is breaking loose. It's breaking loose. Every side, bam, 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 bam. The bigger the promise. The question is, what you going to do? You going to complain or you going to stay in your lane and do what you're supposed to do? Stay in your lane. David had to stay in his lane. No matter, not, never mind the brothers in the house. Never mind all that. Never mind when they were going out to fight. Never mind you ten sheep. You, ten sheep, you do this. He couldn't complain. Why am I not out there with my other brothers? Why am I not there? The father said, you do this. And God has told him, your lane is that. How you get yourself killed is getting outside of this. That's your lane. Everybody got a lane. Everybody got a purpose. And the problem and the frustration comes in when you're not operating in it. Never forget years and years ago, years and years ago, before I even moved to Florida, years and years ago, there are, somebody was asking me to do something because I was planning events. They asked me to do something, yes, I'll do it, whatever. But I'd already assigned them a job to do for this event. I assigned that to them. They told me they were going to do it. We ready for the role. We ready for the Easter production at the, the Georgia Dome at the time. We ready for it. Let's do. But the person I assigned to it didn't do it. So now I had to get other people to do it. And the one who was assigned for it was trying to do somebody else's. And it, 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 it became frustrating. Because what you had agreed to do, what your assignment was not that. And you have now caused a delay. Because you're trying to operate and do somebody else's stuff. And that's the problem with a lot of us. We don't want to operate in what God has called us to do. There are a lot of, are, no offense to teachers. Julia is one of the teachers. There are, there are teachers like, I don't want to teach. You know you call to teach. You know it. But I'm like, they ain't paying me. All right, well, go and be an astronaut. Go. You ain't going to have no fulfillment. Because that's not what's in here. 
And a lot of us just go through life never stopping for a moment to say, God, who did you make me to be? Pause for a moment and say, God, who am I? Because you got a purpose for me. I never in a million years thought I'd be a pastor. Never wanted to be one. Never. Never thought about it, ain't wished for it, ain't prayed for it, ain't looked no way towards it. Didn't want to be it because I know some. And I was like, no, no, God. I don't sign up for that. Not knowing God had a plan. And he was using some of my pain to make me into who I am today. I didn't know my pain was making me. I didn't know the things that I was going through was help mold me. I didn't know that. I looked at it then like, oh, my God. Like God said, like, chill. I didn't know he was making me into this. I didn't have no idea. And some of us, you're trying to figure out, God, what are you doing? He said, I'm making you. I'm molding you. I'm shaping you. We all like the end result. We don't like how we got there. <laughs> we all like the blessing part. We don't like all that. And God says, that's part of it. That's just part of it. We have got to stop complaining. Stop letting life weigh us down. And wake up and say, Lord, this is the day that you have made. And regardless of what life brings me, I'm going to rejoice and I'm choosing to be glad in it. I'm choosing to be glad in it. I got a choice, but my choice is to smile. My choice is to speak life. My, joy, my choice is to say, Lord God, you want the best for me. That's my choice. Although other things are there, I choose to see the good in this. I change my perspective on how I see things. If every day, there are a lot of things that happen in our lives that, call, that makes us, we can see it negatively. There's a lot. But it's how you're going to see it. What's your perspective going to be? See it as an opportunity for God to bless you even more. And not as a setback, but a set up. See it as something that God want to use to promote you, not derail you or demote you. See it as an opportunity for God to say, okay, what door are you about to open? Not what door just closed. Because I firmly believe when God closes one, he's about to open up another one. I firmly believe that. When God closes one door, he's about to open up another door. I believe it. But God has to be. I don't have. Now listen. What, when God closes the door, not when I closed it. That's an ouch. Because some of us are slamming doors. God said, who told you to do that? We slamming doors. We got to do it. Bam, bam, bam. God said, all right. I ain't got nothing open for you because I never told you to close that one. You're supposed to still be in that one. You closed it. And you're looking at me to open it. You're going to sit there in between doors until I'm ready for you. Because that door wasn't supposed to be open until 2026. But you closed it in 2023. Now you got three years to sit in between the doors. <laughs> ah! And some of us sitting right there in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. God said, sit there. I'm going to open it for you because I began a good work. And I know it's already planned for you. And I already got the door open ready for you to step in it at the appointed time. But you did something you shouldn't have done. But I'm going to do what I promised because my word can't fail. So I'm going to open that door at the proper time in the proper season. But you're not ready to go through it yet. You should have still been there letting me make you. So you would have been prepared to go into the door. But since you want to do you, do you. Any doers in here? I ain't talking about the word. Doing things your own way. Understand, God says, I have begun something in you. I got a good work in you. A work, a work, a work, a work, a work, a work, a work. Don't let me just preach it. I want you to grab this. God said, you got to be determined to be all that I've called you to be. All that I've ordained you to be. You've got to tell the Lord, Lord, I will be that without complaint. 
I will be that. Everything you call me to be without murmuring, without being sad. Smile your way through. Laugh when stuff shouldn't even be laughed at. Just be joyful. That's tough. When life is throwing all kind of stuff, they even talk about, we, we love the, the little phrase, uh, what's that, make, take lemons and make lemonade. You got lemons, make lemonade. Now you got two choices. You can make lemonade and be good, or you can suck on it and suck on it and be... Or you can enjoy it and be like, it's not so bad after all. What you choose to do? That's your choice. That's a choice. Life is not easy. And I can't tell you what God is doing in your life. I cannot. I don't even know what he's doing in mine. But I trust him. I don't know what he's doing in my life. I don't even know. I really don't. I don't know why he's choosing this day to do what. I'm like, okay. I wanted you to do that last year. But I can't tell him what to do. He's God. What am I going to do? Other than sit there and say, Lord, have that own way in my life. I, I just surrender. But one thing about it is this. I'm going to be who you call me to be. That's one thing for sure. And I ain't going to throw in the towel. I ain't going to quit. Anybody else who's going to be going who God has called you to be? Where are those who say, Lord, it may be difficult. It may be challenging. But I'm going to be it. Let, let me just see you wave your hand. Hallelujah. Just let me see you. Just tell the Lord, I'm going to be it. I'm going to be it. 